Hello, quick video on how to use the reverse grid method um, for division of polynomials. Um, we might be presented with a horrible polynomial like this one here, um, a fifth order polynomial, and there's no um, uh, formula that we can use to just find the factors. But what we can do is use the factor theorem and reverse grid method to break it down into its constituent parts. So just to remember from the factor theorem that um, here, if I've got um, x equals 1 and I put that into this expression here, I find it comes to 0. So I've got 1 minus 10 plus 30 plus 20 minus 30 minus 30 gives us 0. And as that's 0, we know that x minus 1 is a factor of this uh, function. So I now know x minus um, function, I know x minus 1, so I could now go on and find what this g of x, the, the sort of gubbins of all the rest is. You, and I can do that using reverse grid method. Okay, so I'm going to use a slightly simpler example for us to do this with. I'm going to use a cubic. So here's my cubic expression, x cubed minus 4x minus 7x plus 10 equal, um, and what I'm interested in is in factorising that. Well, as with, um, if I try x equals 1, I find that this expression is 0. So I've got 1 minus 4 minus 7 plus 10. So I've got back to f, f of 1 is 0. So I know that x minus 1 is a factor. So I know what fx is now. I know that x minus 1 is a factor. And I, I want to find that g of x. And I'm going to use the grid method to do it, reverse grid. OK, so here is our grid. Here's our function that we're working on, and here's our grid. First thing we know is that we know that x minus 1 is a factor. So we put that in the column on the left, and we need to um, work out what we're going to put across the top for the, uh, the expression, this is effectively going to be our g of x. Well, if the whole thing is a cubic, and we know that x minus 1 on this side is order 1, then we know we need a quadratic across the top here, don't we, in order to do this, um, because then we get, this is a multiplication table, so x times ax squared is going to give us ax cubed in this box, isn't it? And that's the highest um, power that we're looking for. OK, so let's just get rid of some of that out of the way so we can see more clearly. And what we know is what we're going to be matching our coefficients. So up here in this top corner here, we got x multiplied by ax squared. And we know that that's got to match this x cubed term, which has got a coefficient of 1, hasn't it? So this is just going to be plus x cubed. And therefore, that means that the ax squared that we're looking for is just x squared, isn't it? It's plus x squared. It's multiplying those two together, we get x cubed. And once we've done that, we can look down to the um, square below it. And x squared times by minus 1 is going to give us minus x squared in that box there. There's another term that's going to give us an x squared here, another box, and it's going to be this one here, because we've got bx times x there. Now, those two terms, when added together, must match this minus uh, 4x squared. So the coefficients of these two terms must add up to minus 4. So this one, therefore, must be minus 3, because minus 3 plus minus 1 is minus 4. So that tells us that this bx term must be minus 3x, yeah? Because minus 3 times x is going to give us minus 3x squared. Once we know that term there, we know that's minus 3x there, and we've got to multiply it by it to get to this box here, we need to multiply it by minus 1. We end up with plus 3x in this box here. And there's another x term, it's the one over in this box here, isn't it? Because c times x will give us some function of x, some multiple of x. And these two must add up to a minus 7, these two terms. Well, I've got a plus 3 here, so I need to have a minus 10 in that box, 10x in that box. 
which means that my constant here must be minus 10. And if my constant there is minus 10, and if I do, excuse me, there are minus 10 times by minus 1, I get plus 10 in this box. That's what I'm looking for. That's what we should be seeing because this is a factor. There's no remainder. So there we are. Can you see the journey we went on? We started in this box. We went to that box. We then went across to this box and filled that in, which allowed us to go down to that box and allowed us to go across to that box and finally down to this box. And we found what our ax plus bx, ax squared psi plus bx plus c is. We found it here, haven't we? There it is. OK, here's another version of that. Looks a bit neater and tidier. Let's have a look. There it is. There it's nice and neat and tidy. So what have we proved here? Well, we've proved that this expression up here, x cubed minus 4x minus 7x to x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to x minus 1 times this lot here. There it is. x squared minus 3x minus 10. OK, and if you think about it, now we've got the answer, we could do forward um, grid method, couldn't we? Just multiply those out and we should get back to our x cubed minus 4x, etc. OK, so what have we found so far? Well, we've just proved to ourselves that x cubed, this cubic expression here is equal to, equivalent to x minus 1 times this quadratic here. What we could do is look for the factors of this quadratic. We could either go through using the factor theorem again, or we could use our quadratic approach from GCSE um, by uh, um, multiplying and add up. And we'd find fairly quickly that uh, the two factors here are x plus 2 and x minus 5, aren't they? So that allows us to say that this expression here, this cubic expression, can be factorised into x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 5. There we go. So that was pretty straightforward. OK, so let's just summarise where we are. We can use the reverse grid method here, as we did, to effectively take our cubic and divide it by our linear, and therefore find out what the quadratic is inside and therefore we proved that that cubic is x minus 1 times that quadratic by using the reverse grid. hope that's of use.